Alrighty then, so there might be some things or obstacles that are in your way that are preventing you from pulling the trigger and going into full-blown retirement. Uh, before I get into the meat of the matter here, I want to take one second and just thank everyone that has subscribed recently. There's been a big uptick in that. And so I just want to take a minute and or a second and welcome you to the Old Dog family and let you know that you are appreciated as well as the folks that have been with me for some time now. Okay, that being said, I think via conversations, one of the toughest decisions that some folks are making right now or having to make and is kind of stopping them from going full on retired is one, their parents of all things. Um, they have elderly parents and it's untenable financially for them to put them in the proverbial home uh, because of the rising cost of that. I actually misquoted the amount in another video I did about that a while back. I said it was 800 a month and I, people said, oh Paul, it's like 8,000. So I apologize for my senior moment in that previous video. Uh, put me in a home next. Anyway, um, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, this is my feelings, is that if the folks, if your folks your, or one of your parents, both of your parents are receiving the care that they need and um, it's not your obligation to do so, maybe you're contributing a bit financially with other siblings, whatever. There's so many scenarios, it's very hard to paint the pool, a full picture here. But if you are able to make that break from them, um, this is my feelings on it. And I'd love to hear what you think. I know that when I became a parent, when my kids were born and I would look at them there in the hospital bed, I was thinking, man, you know, I, I'm hoping for great things for this child. I hope that he's a doctor or a lawyer or has some, invents something cool for the world. <laughs> And so I had these grandiose type of dreams and aspirations for all of my kids. And then when I realized none of them were going to get quite that far, <laughs> I said, well, you know what I really want? And I think what all parents really want, other than some sort of big shot success for their kids, is that their children are happy. And that's really, really what I want for my kids regardless of their station in life. I'd like for them to be happy. And I also feel that our parents want us to really and truly be happy. Yeah, they'd like to brag that you're this and you're that. But at the end of the day, I think all parents really take the greatest joy in knowing that their children are living a full, happy, and contented life. And that's what I shared with a gentleman that was stressing out about leaving his father behind. I have a 99-year-old father back in the States. He's going to be 99 next month. And I went and visited him a couple of years. And hopefully this year I'll be able to get back and see him again. And he's always glad to see me. I'm always really glad to see him. But he realizes and he has told me, Paul, He's told, uh, he told me 30 years ago, Paul, I want you to be happy. I want you just to you know, do what you got to do. And he's been that way his life. He's put himself first in many occasions. And by doing so, by taking care of himself, making sure he was satisfied, making sure that his uh, needs were met, he was able to pay that forward. Um, you know, when your vessel is empty and you're feeling bad about yourself, uh, it's hard to give anything when you got nothing left. So I think it's great that you, if it's possible, you go ahead and pull the trigger as long as you've got no other things tethering you there and relax in the fact that that's probably what your parent or parents would want for you. Now, the next one is kids. Um, I firmly believe that if you're of later years, like I am, 
if you have children at a late stage in life, I'm never going to move off of this. I feel that no matter where you are, if you've got children that are still in school or under the age of 18 at least, you're obligated to stay home and be their parent because that's what you signed up for. I mean, when that child was born, um, you, whether you planned it, like the woman, uh, the mother, whatever, uh, and vice versa, be a man, man up, stay there, fulfill the obligation, and do it. I don't think that is a fair rationale to be selfish. I'm going to bail out on little Timmy and Mary here, even though they're 10 years old. They'll understand. No, I don't think so. And that, again, I might get a little heat for that, but okay, fair enough. The flip side is I had coffee with a gentleman over a year ago, and then I had the same conversation a month ago with a different guy. And that was his children weren't little. They were fully grown. And um, the kids were guilt-tripping the fathers. The last one that I recall the best was a gentleman said he had a daughter. And that she, was, and that she was saying, oh, you're abandoning me. You're going to the Philippines? He was just here on a scouting expedition anyway. He hadn't made the full-blown commitment. And he eventually went back. I never knew what, what resolved with him, if he came back or not. But I digress. The conversation was, he said, you know what, Paul? I've got this, this, this daughter and she's like feeling and telling me that I'm abandoning her and she's guilt tripping me. And so I posed a few questions for him. And I said, let me ask you this. I said, how old is your daughter? And I believe he said that she was 27 or 28 years old. I said, oh, okay. So you saw her through college, you did all that. He, oh yeah, yeah. He says, I paid for her college and, and she's got a nice career. I said, oh, she's got a career? She have a good income? Yeah, man, she knocks down like 90 grand a, a year and she's of this and she's of that. And I don't know if she was in a relationship or had kids or any of that wazoo stuff. And I said, okay, so you have a daughter. She's a full grown woman. She's got her own career. How often do you see her in person? And he said, well, you know, she's busy. <laughs> and he says, and she's got this going on and that going on. And I said, okay, but you didn't answer my question, bro. When do you see her? He says, well, she calls me a lot. I said, that's good. You know, that's nice. Well, when do you see her in person? Third time. He says, well, we get together at Christmas and, you know, Thanksgiving. We usually meet in the middle because she had moved to another state or whatever. And I said, okay. Um, I said, let me ask you this. She wants you to come back there because she wants you to be near her. And yet you just told me that you, you guys talk on the phone a lot and you see her during holidays. I said two things to him. I said, number one, that phone that you have that you talk to her on Works great over here. Believe it or not, you can actually talk to somebody in America and have a two-hour conversation with them. You can even see them on what's called a video chat. And you can talk to them all you want. And I said, and number two, if she so dearly needs to see you in person, she's a grown-ass woman, pardon my French, what's stopping her from getting on a plane and coming out to see you? The last time I heard, the Bible said something about honoring thy mother and thy father. Um, where are you at with that? And he said, you know what? I never thought of that. He said, she could come over and visit me, huh? I said, yeah, it's the price of a plane ride. And if you feel so compelled, you can even buy the ticket, which I wouldn't recommend, but that's, again, yeah, that's your call. So I'd be curious as to what you think about that. I think it's unfair since parents want their children to be happy. I think that the children should reciprocate and after all that a parent has done for them, wish the same for their folks. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox on that. I'll make this a real short video. Hey, 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 I just heard a collective sigh of relief 
when you said it was going to be short. I don't appreciate that. All right, last thing, health care. Um, medical conditions. <sighs> Pain management. Again, talking to a number of guys that are saying, hey, Paul, can I get this pill? Can I get this medication? I've, I've got this injury. And these guys aren't junkies. These guys aren't dope fiends. They just have this condition, and it requires some hardcore medication. And I have told them, don't count on it, bro. Um, it's my observation. I've never been hospitalized over here. Um, I know others that have. And from conversations with them, pain management's low on the scale of importance here. And so if you're in chronic pain um, and you've got a 90-day supply, I guess that would be the only answer I could provide. Um, the other thing is limited time to live. It has really put me back on my heels recently that I have met not one, not two, but three guys that have been told me that they have been diagnosed and they have this many years left to live on average. They've got this condition and the average, once it's been diagnosed in whatever stage it's at, will give them this many months or this many years before they're going to probably succumb to it. And they have a decision to make. And I told them, I said, guys, you know, you're going to have to filter that one out yourself. I know what I would do. But their choices are to stay at home, get whatever treatments that they can for that to treat it and hopefully prolong their life. Um, but I asked myself, what kind of life is that? If you still got some zip in your step and some uh, vim and vigor, uh, maybe not necessarily fly all the way over to the Philippines to have your last two or three years, but maybe just, you know, go somewhere, go do something. There's a bucket list. Maybe you've always wanted to see Yellowstone. Maybe you've always wanted to go to Italy. Maybe you've always wanted to see the Swiss Alps. Um, why not? I would say, you know, if you've got the means to do it, rock on. Um, if someone told me tomorrow that I have two years left to live and I could do three years if I take this treatment and the treatment's going to cause all these other side effects, I would opt for the two. I'd like to have two good years and then call it a day. Um, I know this is kind of a bummer little video, but I think it's a reality check. It's come across my radar. I felt it was important that I at least toss that out there because you guys know a lot more than I do. And, of course, that's not saying much, but hey. <laughs> I would be interested in your feedback on this. What advice would you give the guys with the elderly parents, um, with the small children, and the grown children? All right, as usual, thank you very much for watching the video, and I will see you guys in the next one.